big Hollywood heavyweights such as J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg have publicly backed Sean Parker's moving streaming service, Screening Room, Christopher Nolan, James Cameron, and his producing partner are not feeling the same way. In a story from Variety, Nolan, Cameron, and his Titanic producer, John Landau, have declared early opposition against the proposal, with Nolan agreeing with Landau's statement released earlier. The statement reads, both Jim and I remain committed to the sanctity of the in theater experience. For us, from both a creative and financial standpoint, it is essential for movies to be offered exclusively in theaters for their initial release. Christian Byersell, Nolan, and Cameron stand against the proposed streaming service. I buy it, man. I, I do. I buy it. I think that there there's certain purity to going to the movies and getting it the certain movies that should be seen in the theater and I and I understand what both Nolan and James Cameron are saying and I, there's there's certain movies that are not 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 meant for but should be experienced first in the theater and you're kind of t- there's there are some movies that are absolutely that work with the starting in the demand first and the smaller films that works but when it comes to a big like I don't know if if I want to be dependent on the fact that let's say Star Wars comes out and I can I can just sit home and watch it at home I think it takes away from I saw it in the prime at AMC and it was such an experience and it was such a, a, a great thing. Um, yeah, I, I get where these guys are coming from. What, how, about, how about you? I will buy the fact that these guys think it's a bad thing and I'm totally on board with them having that thought because look, it's like that's their industry. You know, that's what they work in. They need people to go out and see movies in the theater. But for me, the reason why I bought this service on Monday, this movie talk is because I love the idea of it. Put the power in the consumer's hand. I'm a consumer. I'm not a filmmaker. So I don't care about how rich James Cameron or rich Christopher Nolan think we should see a movie. I should get the choice, especially when my circumstances may be very different than somebody like Christian's. Like, maybe I don't want to go to the movie theater. Maybe I make the huge mistake of having five kids. And I'm like, I don't want to take all these animals (laughs) out to the theater at the same time. Maybe if they all want to go see Zootopia, we can all just buy Zootopia and we can watch it in the comfort of my own home. We don't have to hire a babysitter if I want to go out and see Star Wars. It should be my call. It should not be some rich filmmaker's decision how I see a movie. Now, having said all that, I love seeing a movie in the theater. I'll see Batman versus Superman for the second time opening night, probably at the AMC Burbank. But that doesn't mean that I don't, that I shouldn't have the right to choose how I get to have my content delivered to me. Miri? I mean, you're very empathetic to the parent cause. Yeah. So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, I agree with you 100% because I, I... I love the idea of the service as a consumer, but I do I do buy what they're saying because it's funny, I just went to this um, film financing panel and Cassie and Elle West was on the panel. He's a huge Hollywood producer. He's produced a ton of big movies. He's had a long storied career. And one of the things he said, because this came up, was this is financially could be potentially disastrous for not just people who are making the movies, but theater owners because you buy the box for 150 bucks, you order a movie for 50 bucks, you invite 10 friends over, you know, there goes ticket sales, right. and there's all these people watching the movie that would have to individually go and buy a ticket. And I thought that's a really good point because there's no limit to how many people you can right. have in your home theater, or living room, wherever, apartment, and watch this movie. So um, it, it brings up a lot of interesting issues. As a consumer, I agree with you. I have kids, it's like, a nightmare and it's expensive to go to a movie theater. It costs about the same amount of money to get a babysitter and go see a movie on a date night as it does to buy the box for this thing. Right. So when you think about it from a financial standpoint, spending 50 bucks on a movie, if there's two of you going out, you know, two tickets and whatever, it ends up being worthwhile. So I get, I get why this is happening. I also think that Sean Parker started Napster and his whole thing is disruption. He likes to come into an industry that's maybe a bit archaic, that's been the same for a long time, and shake things up. He completely changed the music industry, and I think a lot of people are really scared because he could potentially completely create total upheaval for for theaters and ticket sales. The big question is, will Justin Timberlake play him in the version? uh, (laughs) That is the big (laughs) question. But you know, the the other thing is, as far as someone, again, someone who does have a child, like I, it's, it's one of these things though, is that the movies come out three or four months later on either it's Blu-ray or it's like you could wait 
you can yeah, you wait. Can you can wait to see Star Wars. You can wait to not see X Men. You can wait to see Civil yeah. War, Batman versus Superman. But you're not taking. There's some. There's some kids that are too young to see that stuff. But if you, there's, there's other kids that you want to take out to, to, to see it. It's like you can see see it in the theater at time. You, there's a sacrifice you make when you have children. That's one of the things everyone says. It. Oh yeah, don't have them. Don't, I'm saying don't have <laughs> but what, kids. Don't think by the box. But I just I I do agree. <laughs> I, I'm on the side. Of, I'm on the side of Nolan and. Uh, and Cameron here. I just think that, and also because of the relationship, the theaters are probably losing their minds yeah, right now. Are, yeah, that, well, yeah, that's, that, my that's Sean the point Parker to make. Point. That, that's the concern that I have as a fan of these movies because, look, you guys know I love Star Wars, okay? That movie costs, like, really? say, $200 million to make, right? It right. costs $200 million to make. Now, can you get that same amount of budget if the theaters go under and the studios are like, well, we don't know where we're going to throw it? We know that Netflix is able to throw a lot of money and more so than they did a year ago. We know that Daredevil Season 2 might have better production values than the first Daredevil because they got a bigger budget but how big are those budgets going to go where if you are just streaming movies now and the theater chains crumble can movies look as good as they do not just on the big screen but actually have the same level of effects and music and talent and all that stuff going in I totally sympathize with Nolan and James Cameron's position because that's their job but there's ways to get around that if you are a filmmaker there's a lot of people who don't have the means that they do that had to work their way up just like those guys did before they had access to millions and millions of dollars and could go visit the Titanic whenever they wanted so maybe need to go back to those kind of practices well also if you think about how VOD streaming services are starting to dominate traditionally theatrically sure. distributed entities like Sundance this year I mean if you think about it yeah. you know Netflix and Amazon were the biggest purchasers mm -hmm. so um, it is split it is really split in the chat room. There are a lot of people who kind of see what, what you're saying, uh, a lot say is what, what I'm saying, and uh, it, it's split. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.